Hi friends, I'm Tim Viegas from the Maryland Coalition for Inclusive Education, and you are listening to Think Inclusive, our podcast that brings you conversations about inclusive education and what inclusion looks like in the real world. Tim Harris, an entrepreneur and former restaurant owner in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has defied expectations from birth as a person with Down syndrome. He became a Special Olympics athlete at a young age, excelled academically, and graduated as the Homecoming King and Student of the Year from El Dorado High School in 2004. Tim attended Eastern New Mexico University, where he acquired certificates in food service, office skills, and restaurant hosting. In 2010, he fulfilled his dream of opening Tim's Place, the first restaurant owned by a man with Down syndrome, known for his Tim hugs. His journey and powerful message have led him to a successful speaking career, reaching audiences worldwide. In 2021, Tim authored The Book of Hugs, a children's book that emphasizes the healing power of hugs, furthering his mission to spread positivity and inspiration. His remarkable story has garnered international recognition through features in multiple media outlets. In fact, here's a clip from KRQE from August of 2014. If you're looking for a reason and a need to smile on this Friday morning, this is it. Uh, today he's going to remember for the rest of his life, you know, Tim Harris from mm -hmm. Tim's Place here in Albuquerque, great little restaurant. Well, Tim was at the White House last night, but that was only the beginning of a great night for him. Oh, yes. President Obama and the First Lady were hosting the celebration of Special Olympics and a unified generation when the president specifically recognized Tim. Watch. Uh, now he has a restaurant in Albuquerque called Tim's Place. The most popular item is the hug Tim's gives his customers. And so far, more than 42,000 have been served. So where's Tim? Right, yeah. the, president, the president then said, hey, Tim, I didn't get a hug. And guess what happens? Tim emerges from the audience <laughs> and goes up there. And you'll see it in a second. Gives the president one of his signature hugs and brings a huge smile to the chief executive and everybody in the audience. Congratulations, Tim. He even whispered uh, a few words of encouragement to President Obama, which the president uh, appreciated very much. He says, wow, it feels good. For this episode, Tim shares his experiences and insights on inclusion and living an awesome life. Tim talks about his favorite memories from his restaurant, Tim's Place. Tim also opens up about the decision to close his restaurant and the impact it had on his life. Tim emphasizes the importance of dreaming big and standing up for oneself, and he encourages people with disabilities to embrace their awesomeness and be a light in the world. This week, I'd like to highlight one of the sponsors for our narrative podcast series, Inclusion Stories, Roots of Inclusion. Roots of Inclusion envisions a society where every individual experiences unconditional belonging, their human dignity and unique contributions are valued, and they learn, live, and work in equitable, inclusive, and accessible communities. Their mission is to amplify the voices of youth and their families to promote equity, inclusion, and belonging in schools and communities. They leverage this foundation to build a more just, inclusive, and vibrant society. Learn more at rootsofinclusion.org. We've got a great conversation for you today that will help all of us to think inclusive. And for free time this week, I introduce you to Ashley, who tells her story of what inclusive education has meant for her son, Damien. We'll be back after a quick break. Tim Harris, welcome to Think Inclusive. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. So Tim and I met at the Club 21 conference in Pasadena, California earlier this year. I saw Tim speak. You talked about your life. You talked about uh, your restaurant. You talked about the Book of Hugs. So a lot of people may know you from 
you know, the coverage you got when you opened your restaurant, Tim's Place. Thinking back, what's one memory that you have about Tim's Place? My favorite memory was the people walking through the front door, and that's where the world that comes in. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. So you uh, were kind of known for giving people hugs, right? Yep, it's true. The king of <laughs> and, uh, hugs. The king of hugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how did you keep track of like how many hugs you gave? I had a hug clicker in my pocket. I will always click every hug. And so at uh, so a person would come in, you'd give them a hug and you click. And then what would you do with the what would you do with that after the end of the day? I would add them to the wall. Oh, right. Because you had a you had a hug counter on the yeah, wall. On the wall, yeah. Oh, wow. Do you know, do, uh, do you happen to remember how many hugs you gave? I lost count. Yeah, uh, thousands, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, over thousands. Yeah, thousands, th- thousands and thousands. So I know that you made the hard decision to close Tim's place. So w- what was that decision like? It was really sad when I decided that, but my public speaking is awesome right now. Oh, yeah. You actually spoke at a gala last night. I did. It was, I was helping with the raffle prizes and I got to announce the winners of them. That's really cool. So I know you've been to California. And you, you said you were in New Jersey last night. Do you have any other plans for travel? Um, not exactly yet, but I will soon. And you still live in Colorado? I live in New, in New Mexico. Oh, you live in New Mexico. Okay, oh, sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, I moved home because I expected my first niece and nephew. Oh, that's great. Yep, there's okay. kids now. I'm Uncle Tim. Yeah, you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm also an uncle. Like, uh, I have my, so my, my wife's, um, has brothers and sisters. And so they have kids. And so I'm, I'm Uncle Tim as well. So, oh, yeah. It's awesome. Right? It, it is awesome to have nieces and nephews for sure. For sure. You feel like- um, so you're known for giving hugs and you even wrote a book about it. Um, I think it's called The Book of Hugs. So, why why is giving hugs important to you? I love giving hugs. I was, I was born to give them out. It makes me feel awesome and and loved. And I'm sure the people that get the hugs feel good too. Oh yeah, it's awesome right there too. So tell me about your children's book. What is the book of hugs about? It's about three simple steps of giving a good hug just like me. So when I saw you at Club, the Club 21 conference in Pasadena, um, I got a couple books to bring home with me. And so we re- I read them with my young- youngest daughter, and we ended up giving the books to our um, local el- elementary school. So, they, so your book is in a kindergarten class at uh, our local school and a first grade class. So oh, that's yeah, pretty that's cool. awesome. <laughs> Yes. So uh, if anyone uh, is thinking of, of ways how they can support, um, well, hugs in general, but also an independent author like yourself, buying books and giving them to school libraries is a great way to do it. It's really, it's really cool, right? Yeah, it's really cool. So what was your experience like in school? My experience was fun in school. I got way popular in the student body and I won homecoming king in my senior year. Oh wow. And this was in New Mexico? Yes. In New Mexico. It was a long time ago. I I just celebrated nineteen years. I'm getting up there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, man. Well I graduated in ninety six, so I, I, I have got you beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you were homecoming king in high school and you went to. So were you in special education classes like 
all the time or were you included in with general ed at all in high school? Uh, it was mostly special ed. Yeah. So how cool. did you how did you build community and how did you like how did you include yourself in the community if you were in special classes? Oh, um, I got in Included with the student body in the courtyard, having lunch with all those people. So you ate lunch with everyone else. Yeah, I had lunch with all all those people out there, and out there at lunch, I was like a sophomore. I made a best friend out there. Her name was Ashton Mizell. She became my best friend for a long, long time. So it was important to you to have a friend. Oh, yeah. She's more than a friend. She's like a family member to us now. Right, right. But that wouldn't have happened, I guess, if you like ate lunch in your class, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I've been bullied for for half of my high school life until I, I was a senior. Oh, what was what was that like, getting bullied? It didn't feel good. And I made friends with a football team. They were, they were going out to practice one day and saw kids picking on me, taking my lunch money. So there were, there were about 20 guys, and they did a full tackle in the hallway. And dented two lockers with those kids. Well, that sounds like a scene out of a movie. Oh yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> Ever since then, wow, see? they stopped. Ever since yeah. then, they stopped. Yeah. Wow! Wow! So yeah, you had you had the football team had your back. They did have my back the whole entire time I was in school. Did you uh, Did you play football? Um, no, I just felt. Th- th- that they had my back. How did you develop a? How how did you develop friendships with the football team? Did you like go to the games or did you? Oh, um, I, yeah, I've been to the games and basketball games, and I was mm-hmm. the I was the eagle mascot. Oh, okay, for the for football or for basketball? For the basketball games and the football games. Okay, so so okay. All right. So you were the uh, wait. You said you were the you were the mascot. Yeah, I was the I was the mascot for my high school El Dorado. So you did. So you, did you wear a costume? Yeah, it was a mascot costume of the eagle. Of an, oh of an my eagle. goodness! Oh wow. yeah, it's awesome. I bet that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Ever since I, I went also- home, ever since I went homecoming king. I got to, I got to take a break from the from the eagle mascot. Um, uh, I bet that was hot in that costume. It was hot and sweaty a little bit. So, what would you like to tell teachers about people with Down syndrome? I want to tell them that we are a gift to the world, and I want them to tell them, "Don't be afraid." Because because we are awesome, we are the world. It it sounds like you had teachers that believed in you. Is that right? I did. Yeah, they believed that I can do anything. If you can dream it, you can do it. Yeah. And look at you right now, Tim, You're traveling the country, traveling the country, and bringing joy to people with Down syndrome that has a heart defect. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. It, it is awesome. It, do you feel like this is your, like, this is what you were born to do, right? Oh, yeah, always. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about inclusion? Like, what does inclusion mean to you? Um, it, it's, it's like being, being accepted into the world. And we awesome. We bring we bring light into people's hearts. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid of the darkness. Be the light. I like that. What advice would you give to people with disabilities uh, who want to be included? I want them to dream big and 
being awesome and and having fun. What about dreams for you? What what uh, big dreams do you have for your future? I had I had a dream of having a girlfriend, and I make that dream come true for me. Right? Yeah, her name is Elaine, and she's awesome. I love her so much. She means everything to me. She lives in Texas. Yeah, recently I was at a at a community ball, and we did a lot of dancing. Oh, so you like to dance? Oh yeah, I like to dance and have and break and break a move. I have <laughs> I have a lot of dance moves, and I love to cut a rug with her. You are a man of many talents, Tim. Yeah, and I love to sing too. <laughs> he's, a, he's a tip, he's a triple threat. He's got <laughs> oh, yeah. the moves. He's got the dance moves. He's got the singing, and then I bet you, I bet you do uh, some good acting too. Well, I, I oh, did you do uh, <laughs> when you were in high school? Let me, um, or in school in general, did you do any um, like theater? I not in high school, but in college. Oh, where'd you go to college? Eastern New Mexico University of Waswell. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, so you did some theater in college. Very cool. Yeah, I was in the special ed department there in college, and I learned a lot. I did. I graduated in food service, restaurant hosting, and office skills, and I learned to type fast on, on a computer. That's fantastic. Is that what? Going back to your restaurant, like because you said you graduated uh, with a with a degree or with training in food service. So like, was it in preparation for you to uh, open a restaurant? Oh yeah. It helped me a lot to get out there in the world. Okay. In high school, my best friend Ashton, um, helped me get a job at a restaurant called Red Robin. It's a restaurant. It's like a chain. And she got excited and she talked to the management and, Got me a job there. What did you do at Red Robin? I was a host. I'm at the front door, opening the front door and flexing my my, my muscles here. <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> wow, so that was like pre-Tim's place. It was kind of like that, but a little bit. Right, yeah, yeah. So it, it prepared you for opening the restaurant like because you had experience, right? Oh, yes, I did. After I, I I closed my place, after I cried a lot, I got hired to work for the Range Cafe in New Mexico. Okay. As a host? As a host, a long time ago. But now I cleaned tables and came making money so I can live an awesome life on my yeah. own. Yeah. Yep. And now you get paid to speak. It's awesome, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, a good my, life. Yeah, my life coach. She's my business partner as well. She helps me book. She helps book my events. So, Tim, what advice would you give to people with disabilities who want to be included? Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. It's good to stand up and and show the world how awesome we are. What advice? do you have for people with disabilities who may be listening to our conversation? I want them to dream big so they can be like me. Fantastic. Tim, I know that you do a lot of public speaking. So what are some of the things that you talk about when you give your speeches? I talk about my seven steps to my awesome life. Okay. And seven steps. Any other topics? My favorite, my favorite topic is don't complain about the darkness, be the light. That topic is um, really sensitive for me, too, because I talk about my parents in that. What about your parents? Uh, when I talk about that, I, I break down and cry sometimes. And I get it, somebody... It, it, and I get mm-hmm. somebody to come up on stage and give me a hug after I cry. Like my left coach here. 
Yeah. And, or somebody that's on stage, I would tell them to give me a hug. It sounds like your parents have been very supportive. They've been supportive of my life for a long time. Yeah. I do. I have someone else to mention on here, too. I like to mention my mom. Because she's my rock, my everything. I want, I want to tell her happy Mother's Day. I love her. Are you going to see your mom on Mother's Day? Yes, I will. I'm doing a ton of stuff to get ready to make her happy. Oh, nice. Nice. Excellent. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I do have a special song that my best friend and I sing. It was very special. It's my best friend, Ashton. You have a song that you sing with Ashton? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. It's pretty fun. It's pretty moving for people to hear that. Okay. It's awesome. All right. Did you did you want to did you want to sing it? Yeah, just for a a quick second. Yeah, you go ahead, man. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long, so I'm gonna need. A best friend to lean on. That's nice work. Yeah, that's the song I became best friends with Ashton. Awesome. Tim Harris, thanks for being on the Think Inclusive podcast. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having me here, Tim, Mr. Cool. I'm keeping that in. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> That chime means it's free time. And this week, I want to share Ashley's story about her son, Damien. Damien goes to school in Calvert County Public Schools in Maryland, one of MCIE's longtime partner school districts. She explains what inclusive education has meant for her son in high school. I'm Ashley. Um, I had Damien when I was 16. Um, very young. Um, and my mom, my parents helped me out a lot with um, when, it, when he was a baby and graduating high school and stuff. Um, when he was about two and a half, he started having seizures at nighttime um, and they just kind of progressed um, really bad into all these different types of seizures. Um, his exact diagnosis is lennox gesto syndrome. Then we found the right combination of medicine in 2014. And ever since then, he's been seizure-free, zero seizures. He's always been in a functional skills class since third grade. Once he got to high school to the functional skills class, um, we noticed a severe change in his um, confidence, self-esteem. He was in that classroom all day long except for one class for um, his resource class and then for lunch. But at lunchtime, he had to sit with that class as well. So anytime they would leave that classroom and walk in the hallway to lunch, to the gym, to wherever, Damien would always walk away from them. Mr. Brian had mentioned it to me before Damien did go to high school that um, he could do the inclusion at his home school. And then I was just really nervous because um, it was it would have been his first year in high school. Um I just, I just wasn't comfortable. Um, I didn't know much detail either. The way I had envisioned it was Damien would be thrown into high school, figure it out. You know what I mean? Kind of like you know, get a schedule. Nobody would be with him. He had been, he had had a one-on-one -on -one assistant his whole life. So it was just like, Oh, that's intimidating. So I was like, you know, not this year. And Brian, even on the last day of school, he asked again, um, which I, you know, I wish I would have said yes, but it is what it is. Um, but he was pretty, you know, adamant. He's like, he can do this, Ashley. Like, you know, it's not fair that he has to go to a whole nother school that's out of his school district. Um, so I was just nervous, but he did, you know, he went to that high school for a year and a half, almost two years. I had decided to reach out to Brian again and just say, you know, hey, do you think that Calvert High would be an option for Damien? And it, immediately he was like, absolutely. Yes, let's do it. Like, you know, I'm going to hook you up with my wife. My wife will help. Brittany will help us. And within two or three months, the plan was set. And that was the best decision I've ever made. 
Damien has never been so um, enthusiastic about school. He loves going to school. He doesn't want to miss a day ever. Um, his confidence is through the roof. His self-esteem is through the roof. Um, you know, he's doing normal 11th grade stuff. It's not so much for the education piece. It's for the experience so that he does feel like he is a normal 11th grader. Um, Cause he, you know, he knows he has a disability. He knows that he's still struggling to read and stuff like that. So, but at like where he's at now at that school, like you can never, I can never tell that he is different because he's just included in everything down to the football team. He was the football manager of the whole football team at that school. Um, so just the, you know, and his IEP, the goals and stuff are still the same, but he has a wonderful caseworker, a wonderful teacher. Um, all of his teachers have been wonderful. They have nothing but, you know, really good stuff to say about Damien. Um, they wish that every kid had the same attitude about school like Damien does because he just loves school. And I just feel like he has never thrived so much as he has this school year. We didn't do a... Um, like an IEP meeting. We did a map meeting. Um, and I really liked that, like Brian made it about not everything that Damien can't do. He made it about everything that Damien can do. Um, and that's something that I love because I feel like IEP meetings sometimes are so intimidating and so negative because it's just everything that your child can't do. Um, so I was really happy about that piece. So that kind of like already was like, okay, well, this is different. And I just, it wasn't, I guess before it wasn't explained as much as Brian and Brittany, his wife explained it this time. And when they explained that, you know, he's not just going to be thrown in there with the schedule and expect it to just figure out everything. That's not how it is at all. Now I'm completely satisfied with it. Any child can be a part of inclusive education, um, no matter the disability, in my opinion. Um, I think it ultimately will change your child's whole life. Um, as far as self-esteem and confidence, I mean, that is one thing that's so important. Um, and now that Damien is in there, I feel like it has given him, given him a lot of motivation, um, a lot of determination, um, almost a sense of security. Um, you know, and I would just say, don't, you know, don't give up because we are our voice for our children, um, when they can't be. And I just feel like if, you know, if it was always here, if inclusive education was was always an option, then it wouldn't be so many, you know, bullies or insecurities within kids with disabilities. Um, so, you know, don't give up. Um, if I, you know, if we would have given up, Damien wouldn't be at the school right now. You know, he would still be in the functional skills class. Um, and I don't even want to think about how his mental health would be. But, you know, that's I think that's just the main thing. Don't give up be the voice for your child. You know, you know, what makes your child happy. You know what your child deserves. Um, so that would be the main thing. For more information about inclusive education or to learn how you can partner with MCIE on school transformation or professional learning opportunities, visit mcie.org. Thanks again to Roots of Inclusion for being one of our amazing sponsors for Inclusion Stories. We could have not done this project without you. Love Think Inclusive? Here are a few ways to let us know. Rate us on Spotify or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Become a patron like these fine people. Thank you to Aaron P., Jarrett T., Joyner A., Kathy B., Mark C., Gabby M., Kathleen T., and Paula W. We appreciate your continued support of Think Inclusive. Think Inclusive is written, edited, designed, mixed, and mastered by me, Tim Viegas. Original music by Miles Kredich. Additional music from Melody. Thanks for your time and attention. And remember, inclusion always works. I am training to become a bodybuilder. I've been on to a gym that's a bodybuilding gym. It's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's that's hard work. It is hard work, but I'm trying to get there. It's hard right well, now. Well, yeah, good I luck. Can do it. 
from MCIE.